since I haven't yet done a Trump story on my channel yet, being so it's a new channel and all, got this little nugget today from the Daily Mail UK. And this is February 15th that this video is being put out. So let's read and see what we've got going on here. Trump administration deploys elite border patrol tactical units to 10 largest sanctuary cities. As always, the article link will be archived in the description so you can check out the original if you want. All right, let's get it on. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> this should be good. The Trump administration is deploying highly trained officers to boost arrests of unauthorized immigrants in a number of cities. The latest move in a battle against localities that adopt sanctuary policies to protect them from deportation. Oh, I know this is on the Daily Mail. It looks like it was written by Reuters, but I like here how they call them unauthorized immigrants. As always, Always we take a look at any source, we kind of judge it based on the tone they use to determine what side of the argument they're on how they're trying to frame the narrative, I guess. Well, let's read some more, though, here. Members of U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CBP, Border Patrol's tactical unit, BORTAC, they call it here, will be among officers deployed to cities to assist immigration and customs enforcement officials, or ICE. They will be sent to New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, San Francisco, Atlanta, Houston, Boston, New Orleans, Detroit, and Newark. CBP spokesman Lawrence Payne said in a statement on Friday, BORTAC agents undergo a grueling training program designed to mirror aspects of U.S. Special Forces operations courses, according to details about the program published on the CBP website. The unit was launched in 1984 in response to rioting at immigration detention facilities. Scores of Democrat-controlled cities and counties have adopted policies to limit cooperation with federal immigration enforcement, making them a target for Republican President Donald Trump, who has made immigration a centerpiece of his re-election campaign, and obviously, as we know, it was a centerpiece of his election campaign the first time around. The move to boost ICE support in targeted cities first reported by the New York Times marks the latest escalation in the administration's fight against these localities and comes just days after the Department of Justice filed lawsuits against the state of New Jersey and King County, Washington, where Seattle is located. And I was kind of wondering why Seattle and Portland weren't mentioned with the above 10 cities. We have seem to have heard a lot about those two in terms of their stance on sanctuary cities. The Department of Homeland Security said last week it would bar New Yorkers from obtaining obtaining new and renewal global entry passes and from participating in three programs that permit faster travel between the United States, Canada, and Mexico, which could affect hundreds of thousands of travelers. That's one thing that... <sighs> I would say I don't get. First off, before we go any further, you would expect there to be lawsuits filed within minutes of this happening. I would expect by Monday there to be something filed in courts all over the U.S. because that's how it was before. Whenever the administration had some kind of policy directed at illegal immigrants, these sanctuary cities were quick to have a lawsuit filed that same day or the next day as if they're typed up. And I would imagine that the administration has it the same way. If a judgment doesn't go their way, then the appeal is probably already prepared ahead of time so they can file it as quickly as possible. So let's read a little bit more and get some statements here. ICE is utilizing CBC to supplement enforcement activity in response to the resource challenges stemming from sanctuary city policies. And that's from ICE Acting Director Matthew T. Albsense. He further goes on to say, as we have noted for years in jurisdictions where we are not allowed to assume custody of aliens from jails, our officers are forced to make at-large arrests of criminal aliens who have been released into the communities. The deployment will run February through May, the New York Times reported, citing a CBP email. The move drew criticism from some including Ayanna Presley, a Democrat congresswoman from Massachusetts whose district includes Boston. Let us be clear, she says, this move has nothing to do with public safety, but rather serves only to further the Trump's administration's agenda to intimidate and retaliate against cities that uphold the dignity and humanity of our illegal immigrant neighbors. She said in an emailed statement, we will not stand for this. I think whatever side you're on, you get that the administration feels how they do. It's obviously logical that under his leadership, CBP, ICE, and everything like that would be trying to enact these policies. And we've heard about these in the past years as well. He was at one point trying to withhold federal money from cities that had sanctuary policies. I remember that. I think that was struck down ultimately in court. I don't know if it went to the Supreme Court. I just can't recall. And I don't recall if they had appealed that or not. The administration, that is. There's that one side of it. And then, of course, on the other side, which is, of course, the Democrats, or the liberals, whatever you want to call them, those individuals on the left. They have individuals like Ms. Presley who continues to use the same kind of rhetoric. And this is a common political tactic. They try to take the issue and turn it into something else. 
the issue is whether or not these individuals are here illegally, whether they're committing crime and whatnot. So if you have the case where the individuals are here illegally, then you would think that a majority of Americans are going to be like, okay, they're here illegally, they've committed these crimes. But if you can frame the argument in a way where it says, if you can frame the argument in a way, and we'll take her own words here, the dignity and humanity of our illegal immigrant neighbors. So rather than saying that they're legal or not, whether the crime was committed or not, tries to make it more of a personal issue. And the same thing we saw with the whole border thing, kids in cages, the migrants, the mothers, oh, we don't want to send the mothers back. So again, that side of the whole argument is always the personal side. It's not whether or not it's an issue of legality and the impact that the individuals would have on the financial system, and as well as the criminal system. It's always about, oh, it's about their dignity. It's about that of the immigrant neighbors of ours. And of course, with that verbiage, they never talk about the illegal aspect of it. They keep talking about immigrants, 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 refusing to acknowledge the fact that they're illegal because, again, you're trying to frame the argument, right? You're trying to act like it's the family who came here legally with their children, and all of a sudden, Trump is going to try to throw them in jail. Like I would say, it's how you frame the argument. Of course, on the other side of it, they would definitely try their own tactics to frame the argument to garner public support as well. And we see it, we'll see it from both sides as time goes on. I think it's going to be interesting for me to see how this plays out, to see what the counter is now and how they try to pursue things from a legal perspective, because you know, <laughs> you know, there's going to be a challenge. And you know if ultimately they're able to stop Trump from doing what he's trying to do here, that the administration's going to have a lawsuit of their own. And again, it's all about framing the narrative. So what do you think about this story? Is Trump right to be doing what he's trying to do here? Is the congressperson correct in what she's talking about in terms of it being a dignity issue rather than a criminal and illegality issue? And as always, just wanted to thank you all for watching. Time's valuable. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. So take care, everybody. Have a good day.